good. <laughs> By popular demand, we are at Planet Fitness for a chest workout. We've shown you back, we've shown you shoulders and arms. Now everybody wants to know, how do I develop some thick, juicy chesticles? So, let's get after it. We are back at Planet Fitness for a highly requested chest day. And the first thing we're gonna start with is a seated chest press. Now, with this machine, one of the mistakes that people make a lot of the time is to have this coming too far back. Just because you can push from back here doesn't mean that you should. Additional lengthening of the pec, once you get past the point where the humerus can no longer comfortably go, is not useful. Um, so a lot of times people will start back here, but oh, I get so much more stretch. It's like, it doesn't matter. You don't need that additional stretch. If you cannot get your hands coming back off of here, so a trick I learned from Paul Carter, then get it to a place where you can actually get your hands off of it and push from that position and go from there. And if you notice when I'm doing this, there's just a slight angle downwards. I'm pushing down this way because the majority of the fibers of the chest run straight across or partially downwards. So you're gonna get the best leverage and the best overall ability to stimulate the most fibers by this slightly downwards push. If it was moving up, then what would happen is it would start off on the sternal fibers, but then it would move more into the clavicles. And that's not really what we're going for right here. Right here, we're going for the mid to lower fibers. All right, so first set, the last one was just warm up. What we're looking to get is we're looking to get into the five plus range. If I can't get to five reps, then what I'll do is I'll just wait for a second and then go back at it until I can get into that five plus range. But the goal is five reps minimum all the way to failure. That was five, right? Okay. Right? I think so. Close enough. Next thing we'll move on to is an incline press. Now, a lot of people, when they're looking for an incline press, the first thing they're gonna go to is their hammer strength presses. I mean, you can see why. It's an overall fairly good movement, easy to overload. The issue that I have with it mainly is with the tracking system. So it starts out pushing fairly straightforward, and then it kind of slopes its way into up. And I don't really like that for the upper chest. I prefer something that pushes a little bit straighter through the whole movement. So if it could push from here straight out like this, I would love it. But instead it swings upwards. Um, that doesn't make it a bad exercise. I know a lot of people are going to opt for it, but I actually prefer to do a modified shoulder press. So this machine right here, the overall path of it follows a little bit better. And all you have to do is scoot your butt forward, gets you a really, in a really good spot to start pressing from. You press straight ahead. Now, one of the issues that you might run into with this machine is, and one of the issues that I run into, even when I take and put it on the highest setting, it's still going to be relatively light. Can I still take it to failure within that 30 rep range? Of course. But I prefer to keep my reps somewhere between five to 10 when possible. And this machine makes it kind of hard to do that because you're just a little bit too strong for it. So my preference is to pull out the gym pins. Look at that in the box, ready to go. It smells so good. Not doesn't smell like anything. But 
two gym pins, adding a little bit of extra weight. And you can see what that looks like. Great for the upper chest. Good. Beautiful. All right. this very clear before I do this set. The first two exercises, more than enough to completely hit your chest. You do not need to throw this in at the end. The only reason I'm even doing this is because of the fact that chest is all we're hitting today, other than we might do calves at the end, but really this is just a chest day. So it's like, if I'm just doing chest and I'm gonna have lots of time to recover, I'm not working it out for a little while, I can probably throw this in without too much issue, but I'm gonna be completely honest, could probably just leave it at the first two exercises, four sets, but we'll do this for a fifth set and five sets of chest, more than enough to grow it. Um, four sets even is a lot. and one of the mistakes that people make with calves or that most people make with calves is just going through the motions. They don't really think about what they're trying to accomplish. Now the calves get a lot more out of the stretch position. So if you're going to be doing calves, you wanna make sure you spend the majority of your time in the bottom of that movement. What I suggest is around three seconds at the bottom, go up, let it down slowly, three seconds at the bottom. And then when you can no longer perform those anymore, do partials at the bottom, and then when you can't do that anymore, <laughs> then hold it at the bottom, and basically just go through as much pain as you possibly can. Two, three. Two, three. Ah. This is too close. And that's pretty much it. As long as you are willing to do these types of exercises over time, progress them, use good technique, slow eccentrics, I promise you, you will develop a very good chest. Most people just aren't willing to put in the time, so they think they just have some genetic weak point. Chests aren't meant to be that big, okay? People who are genetically predisposed to have large chests often get on Instagram, and so you see those people more often, you think that's just normal, it's not. Give your chest the time it needs and the overall progression it needs to grow and you'll develop some double Ds. TNF out. <laughs>